Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Jewels for the Emperor Penguin by Left Justified Studio. This is a two to five player game that takes roughly 30 to 45 minutes to play and is for ages nine and up. And in the game Jewels for the Emperor Penguin, you are playing as a guild of penguins. You'll select five penguins, each numbered one, two, three, four, and five, three dice of their color and a card, and you're basically going to be going through the ice, gathering jewels and collecting them for the Emperor uh, Penguin. You'll turn those jewels in to gather these beautiful different rings and necklaces and pendants and brooches. And once you've collected enough of them, you're going to gain the Emperor Penguin's grateful gift. That will trigger the end of the game and each player is going to tally up the number of points based on their jewels that they have gathered and their secret guild icon on the back of their player marker, along with if any of your cards have those markers, and score additional points that way. Total number of points, highest point winner is the victor in jewels for the Emperor Penguin. Let's go into the setup, how to play, and then of course my review. Setting up the game Jewels for the Emperor Penguin is actually quite simple. The first thing you'll do is you'll take the two main tile pieces on the bottom that create the main game board and you'll put them together like a puzzle. From there you can play either the advanced or basic mode and if it's your first game I recommend doing the basic mode. Take the tiles and randomly distribute them based on their number in the spaces allocated for them. A's will go in the bottom three positions, B will go in the bottom two, and then it goes to C's, D's, and finally E's. Randomize them, but make sure that they follow the letters and the spaces provided for the letters. From there, you'll flip them all over and create this game board here. Then you're going to go ahead and take the deck of cards. Shuffle the deck of cards and deal out five, as well as the Emperor Penguin's Grateful Thanks, which will give you six cards face up and a deck of face down jewels that you can gain. Take all the jewels in the game. There's going to be red, green, white, and blue, and go ahead and place them in a space that is easily reachable for all players. Take the additional tiles and set them aside, and then you're going to give each player a secret guild. Uh, the guilds are based on the back of these dice placement boards. Uh, these cards are dealt secretly, and players will look at these secretly before the game begins to remember what guild they're in, because these guys are going to represent the different gems that you can gain in the game, which will give you bonus points if the gem matches your guild. Additionally, you're going to give each player three dice. They'll choose a color, they'll gain those three dice, and the penguins that are associated with the dice. Uh, you should have a penguin that is a one, two, three, four, and a five. Then finally, go ahead and give each player a player reference card. This will dictate the different types of symbols in the game so that when you take actions, you can go ahead and utilize the actions by following along on this card here. And on the back here is the value market conversion rate that you can look and see on the bottom of the board here. But for an easier glance, you can just see here. Once you've got your five penguins, your three dice and your guild secretly hidden face down, roll your dice. If you roll your dice and you do not hit a wild, a wild is basically a snowflake, you can choose any one of your dice to flip into a snowflake. Then place all your dice on your little guild marking marker area. After that, then you're going to begin the game. The only thing that you'll need to note is that when you're playing as the first player, you get no bonus resources. But as a second player, you'll get a red. Third player, you'll get a green. Fourth, you'll get a green and a red. And if you're playing with five players, the fifth player will get two red and a green. So basically, if you play last, you have a negative aspect to play, but you'll get bonus resources for going last. Set aside any of the additional tiles and stuff that you do not need, and then go ahead and begin the game Jewels for the Emperor Penguin. Playing the game Jewels for the Emperor Penguin is as simple as setting it up. And once you've selected a first player, the player who most recently visited a freezer, and given everybody the appropriate amount and color of gems based on their turn order, then that player, a player with no gems basically, is starting. They're going to then select one of their dice. All your penguins should be on this bottom floor row here. And when you select one of your die, whether it be one, two, three, four, or five, or the wild, you will take the penguin associated with that die and move the penguin up one space. If I selected a one, I would move my one penguin up one space, if it was a five, so on and so forth. And the wild is my choice of penguin. I'll go ahead and choose my one here for blue. I'll set that aside off of the guild mat and then I will take my one penguin and I will move him. When I move, I can never move up. I always have to move left or right in a upward position. So I can never go straight forward. So, and I can select to go on any side of this game board as long as I'm either going to the top left or top right and move my penguin. 
Once you move your penguin, you're now going to be able to take actions. The action, the first action that you can take is the main action, which is on the left hand side of the tile. This is going to allow you to gain gems or convert gems or gain a specific bonus or action. In this case here, I'm going to get to take one green gem and add it to my supply. Your supply is unlimited. Additionally, there's a bonus action, and this bonus action triggers when the, the penguin ends its move or turn in this space, and every player in that space will get the bonus action. So for instance, if orange was also here and my blue penguin ended up in this space, they would take the green gem, and then orange and the blue player would get a free red gem. In this case, it is just my penguin though, so I will just get an extra red gem. After that, then if I want and I have the resources, I can utilize my gems to purchase one of the jewels here. The jewels have the unique bonus or uh, specific text associated with them. The middle portion is just what the gem is. The top left is how many victory points you will get if you have this in your possession at the end of the game. The top right are the guild symbols. And if your guild is associated with one of these symbols, this card will be worth an additional two points, making this card go from seven to nine. The bottom portion is the cost, and in this case, it is going to cost you one green and two blue to pick up. You will spend the gems in your supply to purchase the cards, and if you do, you will place it down in your supply. You can have, to have up to five of these cards here, and once you do, the game will end and you will get the Emperor Penguin's Grateful Thanks, which is a bonus four points. In this case here, sadly, I do not have the gems required or enough gems to purchase these cards, and I can only ever purchase one, so I'm going to have to pass. When I pass, I will take the die that I chose to use to move my penguin and I will roll my die. I will then take that die and place it back on my guild area. And it will be the next player's turn. They will spend one of their die. They will move one of their penguins. They will get the bonuses, such as in this case, the green and then the bonus red. And because my blue, or the blue player is also there, they would also get a red. And then they will check to see if they can purchase one of these jewels here. They cannot, they will take their die, they will roll it, and they will place it on their board and pass. And the game will just continue from there. And that's basically the main aspects of the game. Now there's a few unique aspects to the game I want to cover as well. We'll just pretend that this purplish blue player here is the only player playing. And basically, I've already have my one penguin here. You can actually bump penguins in this game, but only your own. And the way it works is you have to have a larger penguin move into the space of one of the penguins that you have that is a smaller number. I could spend my two die here to move my two penguin to the same spot my one was in, in the previous turn to then bump this penguin to the top left or the top right. And when I do, the new space that my previous penguin moved into, my, my one as opposed to the two that I originally moved, is going to get that action. In this case, it would be two green gems and a red and the bonus action would be this unique ability. And the ability is listed on your card here. In this case, it's an adjust. You can add or subtract one to any of your dies without being able to revert around. So a six can't go to a one and a one can't go to a six. So I can turn my five into a four. And so that is a way in which you can actually bump your penguins to gain bonuses. You'll, put your die, you'll, roll, you'll roll your die and then you'll place it back. And the same is said for bumping multiple penguins. If let's say I use this wild and it was blue's turn, I could simply take the three penguin, place it on the space my two is at, take my two and bounce it to the one space, and then my one can push farther up, thusly allowing you to get more penguins up on the board and use a larger ability. The farther up you are on this board here, the more value you will gain from the actions that you can take, the main action and the action that everyone gets if they're on here. And getting more penguins up on the board here will give you more options to be able to gain bonus effects from other players when they place their penguin in one of your penguins spaces. Okay, so you know about bumping and you know that you need to have a larger penguin bump a smaller one. And you know that if I had a five up here and I played my four, my four could bump my three, my three could bump my two, my two could bump my one, but my one couldn't bump my five, so this would be my last space and I would gain the main effect. And then the everyone bonus would trigger and I would get two of the everyone bonuses because I get one a trigger for each of the penguins that I own. It doesn't matter whose penguins they are, every penguin is gonna get the bonus effect. 
The last cool thing you can do in this game that is of note is that you can actually go down. You can slide down. I could take my five penguin. If I had a five die, I could spend my five die and I could move my five penguin down the slope. You can never go up, but you can always go down. And when you do that, if you want, you can actually bump. But in addition to that, you'll see that there are uh, gems inside this white kind of snow bank that you will slide down, kind of like a slope. Whenever you slide, you will gain the benefit. So in this case here, if I move my five down, I would get a red and I would get a green gem. I would then also be able to bump this guy here down to the bottom, my three, and I would get three red gems. In which case, I would get to the bottom embankment, which is the area where you can do two trade-ins. In this instance here, I could trade a, trade a red gem for a green, a green for three red, two green for a blue, a blue for three green, a green and a blue for a white, the most popular and most difficult to get. And I could also turn in a red and a white for two blue. And so utilizing these trade-ins, you're then going to be able to hopefully buy these cards that you need. So once you take your turn, at the end of your turn, you're going to check to see if you can get a card spending your resources, and then you're going to reroll your die. Uh, there are a wide variety of different gems in the game that will require different combinations of jewels, uh, like for, or, sorry, there's a wide variety of jewels in the game that require a wide variety of gems to get. This one here is four red and two green. So in this case here, I've got a ton of them now. I could if I want to turn in those to get this guy here. Some of them are going to require a white, which are only obtainable in the more difficult higher layers of this. And eventually when your penguins get so high, you'll want to slide down and you can get multiple sliding bonuses as you progress because you only get the space of the last penguin that you use or you'll get all the slide effects that you can basically muster and the last space. And that's pretty much the game. Once you've gotten five of these uh, items here, and of course, once you gain an item, and let's say that this player gained this item here, a new one's gonna come out instantly, replacing it. Um, then the player is gonna get this, this little card here for four points, and the game will trigger, and everybody will check to see who has the most points. Now you'll reveal your guild, you'll count your, all your points and any bonuses from your guild icons, and then that player, hopefully, whoever it is, has the most points, is the winner of the game, Jewels for the Emperor Penguin. Man, pretty simple game. Okay, so what do I think about the game Jewels of the Emperor Penguin? Well, this game is similar to games like Sagrada. You'll be moving penguins, taking the action, and then the everyone action, gaining gems, spending those gems for jewels, attempting to get five jewels, get the bonus, and have the most points with your jewels and your guild icons on those jewels, plus the bonus to win the game. Then there's the interaction, unlike Sagrada. Uh, Sagrada is typically a game where you're gaining new cards, using those cards to give you currency, spending currency to gain cards that give you currency to progress to gain points. In this one, you're moving penguins. You're bumping penguins and sliding penguins to gain bonus gems, which will then in turn allow you to hopefully gain unique bonuses when other people place on your space to buy the jewels here. Because this board has multiple different variants that you can take, and of course you can rearrange the board, and there's also an advanced mode of the game, the ones without this little crown symbol on the top of the letter here, you can add these guys in, which perform a more complex and advanced gameplay, or just a little bit more unique. Um, this is going to be a game where you're gonna to wanna to work off of other players' actions. Make sure that you focus on where players are going, what players are getting as bonuses, and what tiles are gonna be the best suited for you to get the gems and than jewels that you need. Certain spaces will provide benefits and unique benefits for you depending on where you're at, and sometimes you're not going to be able to get the die rolls that you need to associate your penguins to move to a certain space, thusly allowing you to bump other penguins. Trying to kind of allocate your penguins along the board where your players are, or other players are, is gonna be very important in this game. And that's the first thing that I would want to mention about this game. If you kind of take your own path, ignoring other players, you're going to lose this game. And it was a, a humble, like learning experience I had to go through for my first gameplay. And let's just say I was not satisfied at first. I was like, wow, I'm over here and everybody else is on the other side. They're getting all these bonuses and I get nothing. And so because of that, I learned quickly. And after my next few games, I started to realize that you need to kind of work and interact with other players to gain bonuses, but then make sure that your bonuses and your spaces are better allocated than other people's. Additionally too, you have to kind of take note of the specific type of jewels available to you in these card slots. They could be a wide variety of points, whether it be four points or 10 points with two different guild icons. 
each of them referencing just two guilds, and you're only ever going to have to make, make sure that you maintain uh, the specific gems for your guild. This one's the music one, so I want to gain any of these uh, specific jewels if I have a music icon, like this 10-pointer that also has the additional guild icon on it for 12 points. Oof! Spending your gems wisely, gaining additional ones for free from other players, poor choices in movement is going to be imperative to you. It's a bit of a learning experience. Uh, Sagrada is one of those where you can kind of build up and the game's gonna be progressively similar for all players, even if you kind of make a little bit of a mistake here or there. In this one, I would say it's going to cost you more if you're not paying attention to where other players are moving, what bonuses are being provided to them, and how you can capitalize on their penguins based on where they're going to move next, because you have an idea of where their penguins are going to be able to bounce to. You know that if they have a one and a two and a three, and they have a die that is available to them next turn that's a four, it's very likely they're gonna do that so they can move all of their penguins up, as opposed to using that one die that'll just let them move one space forward. But sometimes it's actually worth doing so. Also being able to note that sometimes it's also worth to bounce your penguins to score additional bonuses moving all the way down the track here because then you're going to want to spend your gems or convert them. Conversion rates are good in this game and useful and so sometimes it's actually worth saving and holding on to your gems to move down the game board gathering additional points to gain the two conversions to gain the card that you need. Uh, one or two gems can be the difference of getting a valuable jewel or a less valuable jewel. And so sometimes players will kind of hold on to those turns. The interaction in this game is fun and the stylized variation of the board presents unique combat strategies or I don't know, tactical strategies. It's, it's a bit of combat. You're moving your penguins into allocated spaces kind of with control, whereas your opponents are also doing the same and kind of mimicking you and also protecting their spaces by placing additional penguins on there to give them bonuses. And you're going to have to kind of choose wisely as you move through this game here. The game Jewels for the Ember Penguin is beautiful. It's vivid, it's uh, like lively, it has all these wonderful, cool colors. Kind of reminds me of Ice Cool, that type of a game as far as how the design and feel looks. You do feel like you're moving your penguins, sliding them across. One big penguin is kind of bouncing into a small one and bouncing that one forward, scoring them the ability to gain better gems as they move up the mountain. And then they'll have to come skidding down to reach the bottom to kind of convert those gems to make better um, requirements for the jewels that they need for their guild. It's a simple game. It's not super complex when it comes to the story or mechanics, but the choices you make are definitely uh, important and having to make sure that you make those choices accurately will probably take one game or two. So definitely play the base mode first and then move on to the advanced mode. There's a bunch of variability in this game and so you're going to have replayability pretty consistent from game to game. Not only is it that, but it's also based on the players that you're playing against and how they choose to move along the game board, focusing themselves on gaining basic gems and converting them, pushing their way all the way to the top to gain the super benefits, but then having to drop down. And so you're going to have this constant back and forth push and pull throughout the game quality of the game. All of the pieces are wonderful. All the penguins are not only wooden meeples, but also have a beautiful like stamp on each of them. It's easy to tell the numbers when looking on the game board where your one, two, three, four, and five are, and they each have their own unique models too, which makes it nice. The gems are the generic, what I would call Amazon gems, and they're referencing the different colors. It's nothing more than you need, and it does the job perfectly well. All the tiles are beautiful. I love the fact that they added the extra gloss to them and they shine in the light. They feel good to move across and to place. And the cards are stunning. The beautiful jewels work very well. Simple to read, easy to understand. I really, really think this game was very well designed. Uh, minus my first game or so of kind of getting the idea of how the strategy works because you have to kind of there is definitely a learning curve to this game and I had some hurt feels at first thinking I could kind of go off on my own and do just as well and I had a dark grim reminder that that's not a thing you can do in games like these every game after that I started to see the complexity and the strategy and how you choose to move with other players kind of want almost for this game board to be smaller so that way I feel like it's a little bit more condensed but pretty much other than that this game does its job perfectly for those of you guys who like Splendor that want something with a little bit more interaction a little bit more movement then this is going to be a game for you another uh, recommendation from my 
one of the people who work with Unfiltered Gamer, Brian, as maybe even if the game's aesthetic was a little bit more like a heavier style kind of like, as opposed to like a family looking game, more of like an adult looking game. Um, I, I think that would work either way. I don't mind playing it just like this or even adding even more advanced aspects to this game. But as it stands, it's a fun game. It's easy to learn. It's definitely nine plus, I would say, the basic mechanics. And I also think that it does advance along as you play. So if you're looking for a game like uh, Sagrada that has a little bit more penguin and a little bit more movement, then Jewels for the Emperor Penguin is going to be for you. For me, it's a game that's right down the middle. I enjoyed it. I'll play it again. My wife loved this game, so we're going to be keeping it. Decide for yourself and let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Jewels for the Emperor Penguin. How many times have I said that name this video? Check out our YouTube videos. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe if you think we've earned it. If you've seen more than one of our videos here before and you appreciate it, do so. It does let us know that you care. You can also watch our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like Jewels for the Emperor Penguin. In fact, we might do so at some point. You can also go ahead and check us out at unfilteredgamer.com blog post giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to gathering jewels for the Emperor Penguin with my guild, and not you, next time. <laughs>